Now thistles are often thought of as unwanted plants, but in a habitat like this, they're absolutely fantastic. They're really special plants to have. They provide a lot of nectar, these marsh thistles here. Lovely, they're called welts as well. They have these very tall stems uh, with these. I presume they're called welts because they have these welted stems with little ridges on. They grow high, almost as high as me, I'm about six foot tall, and they're not far off my height. But they're absolutely buzzing with insects. Things like small bees will love them, uh, butterflies come to them, and uh, honeybees and bumblebees and all sorts as well. And one of the other things you often see on not just these thistles, but all sorts of plants is cuckoo spit. And this is the larva of the of common frog hopper. And he lives, the little larva is quite soft bodied to start with. It's a type of bug, a true bug rather than a general bug and uh, the larva of that will live inside that frothy mass. So it chews a hole in the stem, sucks out some of the plant sap, and then it will make a bubble home for itself and live in there until it's big enough and hard enough to bounce around out in the wild on its own. I mean, some plants are maligned by gardeners, such as dandelions, which we've seen are useful for insects, and other plants like dock as well. I mean. They can be a bit invasive, but they're good for some insects. So this is a uh, dock bug. It's a brown bug, quite a big bug, bug a kind of shield bug. And this one feeds exclusively on docks. So it loves docks. And uh, the adults will come out in the springtime, then they'll lay eggs on docks. The larvae will develop over the summer, and then the adults, these adults will die, and the new adults will emerge in the autumn, and then they'll hibernate. So you often see them clustered on sort of sunny days in October, getting a bit of warmth before they go down into the leaf litter to hibernate and then they'll emerge again next spring. A little dock bug. Here's another beetle which is really easy to identify. It's called the garden chafer. Although it doesn't really always live in gardens, it mainly lives in grasslands. And it's very, very common on the moor, particularly sort of end of May, early June. So now we're getting towards the end of the season, but you'll certainly see lots of these around, very distinctive. It's a chafer beetle, so related to the May bugs. Uh, but it's a smaller version as you can see. There's a blue black thorax and slightly greenish head and then these sort of russet brown wing cases. And these things swarm in the grass and the larvae feed in the roots of grasses and there's so many up on Dartmoor. I mean you, sometimes in, in the sort of May June time you'll see huge flocks of gulls which fly up from the coast and they know that these beetles are emerging and they remember each year to fly up towards round Benford, Holmore, that sort of way and they'll go and feast on these uh, beetles. There's thousands and thousands of them there for them to eat. Now, when you've got woodlands around meadows, uh, the, the meadows themselves provide a really good nectar source for some of the insects which just live in dead wood. And one of them is the longhorn beetle, or there's lots of different species of longhorn beetle. This one's a variable longhorn beetle, quite a large, impressive insect. Uh, usually flies May, June time, so it's getting a bit late for them now. It's a little bit worn out, this one, uh, but quite an impressive creature. It'll live for two or three years as a larva, feeding, munching away on the, on the dead wood, and then it will fly just for a week or two in the summer, and it will feed on nectar. So these things like bramble and umbellifers and those sort of flowers uh, to feed on. So it's a really important to have meadows next to woodlands for, the, for insects like this to survive. So with the 4,000 species of beetle, uh, some, are, some are easiest to identify, some of the bigger ones, but most are really quite hard to identify, even if you've got them pinned under a microscope. Uh, and especially flea beetles, there's lots of flea beetles around and there's some on this yellow flag, but if they're on the yellow flag, they're actually really easy to identify because it's a thing called Apthona nonstriata. It's the yellow flag flea beetle and as I've touched a few bits of yellow flag they've jumped off but you can see where they've been feeding they make little feeding galleries down in sort of uh, vertically down the, the leaf of the yellow flag so if you see that you know the yellow flag flea beetles around and it's absolutely abundant in this meadow here uh, the larvae well they're just going over a bit now there's still a few around and the larvae will feed over the summer and grow into new, new yellow flag flea beetles in the in the autumn and then they'll hatch out over winter in, down in amongst the grass and they will hatch next year. So there's a couple on my hand here. Just to prove they're flea beetles, they will jump. And that one doesn't want to, but that's a non-jumping flea beetle. <laughs> Most of them jump.